A lot of people are about to play Starfield, and there is a ton of stuff to do in this game. And there's no guarantee you're gonna do it right. That's where today's video comes in. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 mistakes you shouldn't make in Starfield. Starting off with number 10, don't ignore the main story. So once you get past the prologue, the world of Starfield opens right up, and oh man, is it tempting to dive right in. And like most Bethesda games, yeah, absolutely can. You wanna completely ignore the main story? There's nothing stopping you. This world is there and there's so much to do. However, I would argue that in this case, it's it's actually a mistake to just completely ignore the main story. I'm not going to give spoilers and say why, but I will say that progressing the story up to a certain point should probably be the first thing you do. Work with the constellation through the mission into the unknown at very least, and then feel free to start doing other things. I can't tell you why it's a good idea to do this, but I don't want to spoil anything. All I can really say is that I did not progress the main story for a long time, and I ended up regretting it for very reasons play the game and you will see why also come back here and leave a comment thanking me for this warning once you get past it once you get past in the unknown i want to see you come back to this video and leave a comment and be like you know what falcon when you're right you're right and number nine, this is a big one. Bringing a companion with you on any stealth mission, it's always, every time, without exception, a mistake. There are a lot of missions that never outright require stealth. Like, you don't fail if you get caught, but your rewards are much, much worse if you're spotted. A lot of these missions also punish you for killing enemies, so it's in your best interest to complete them as stealthily as possible. Also, although in the end it doesn't really matter, nobody loves getting chewed out for doing a mission wrong. So while perfect stealth isn't exactly enforced, it's strongly encouraged. A companions, they can be helpful. Nobody's saying that they can't be. But when it comes to sneaking, they are the worst. Do not bring them with you when you're asked to do any kind of sneaking, no matter how minor the sneaking is. Don't bring your buddy into the heavily patrolled corporate headquarters, because you know what your buddy's going to do? Everything. Sneaking is about doing very little, making no noise, making no brash actions that cause detection. Oh, your friend ain't going to act that way. If you're detected, that means so if stealth goes wrong, and it's gonna, it's gonna if you bring a guy. But the instant it goes wrong, it becomes a so anyway I started blasting situation. It's no longer a stealth mission, it's a bloodbath. Even if you choose to have them wait outside, like make sure they're really far away from you. I left a companion in the waiting area and I got briefly spotted but not caught. And you know what, what happened? I come back and my guy is engaged in the Matrix lobby scene with the frickin' receptionist. If stealth is asked of you, leave the companions behind. They are much more of a liability than anything else. At number eight, don't miss out on this guy in Sidonia. Maybe this guy looks obvious to you, but to me, he seemed like any other random NPC with maybe a little bit more set dressing around him than usual. Don't be like me and walk past him, because that set dressing, it is a message from the developers that you should talk to him. Why? Because the quest he gives you, the top of the list, should be taken as early as you possibly can take it. So you find this guy in the bar on Sidonia, the mining colony on Mars, and one of the first major locations you visit in Starfield. So find Finding him isn't difficult or anything. It's just super easy to overlook him as just a generic NPC. He's smack dab in the middle of the bar. He's surrounded by paperwork, and I don't consider paperwork to be particularly exciting or interesting. I see paperwork, I go the other way. That's all I'm saying. But apparently the paperwork is supposed to attract your eyes. Out of the question, I do not do paperwork. Unfortunately, this paperwork is my responsibility only. As much as I'd appreciate help, <laughs> I, I wouldn't make you do any. That's not what happens anytime anybody puts papers on a desk in front of me. But spotting him isn't super difficult. It's just recognizing that you're supposed to talk to him that counts. I didn't notice this guy uh, was worth even a second look until after I beat the game. I went through that bar multiple times. I never thought, you know what? I would like to talk to that man with the paperwork because no one ever thinks that, right? I mean, no, I take that back. There's weird paperwork people out there. There's people that love filling out forms. I don't. Let's just say there wasn't really an allure factor, nothing 
brought me in per se so the earlier you take on this guy's mission though the easier it is what he wants you to do is survey hospitable worlds and recruit people as colonists which um as you can tell from the enticing pile of paper around him isn't exactly a james bond level quest but while the first part can be completed anytime like after beating the game i had a ton of planet information to just sell him but recruiting colonists means you actually need to talk to people all around the world and convince them to join. It's an option that only shows up after you get the mission. So now you have to go around to everywhere you've already been if you want to find any of the people to do this with. So it's it's better to just get the quest early and find people as you explore rather than the other way around. At number seven, don't forget you can just run from a fight. At the start of the game, ship combat can be pretty brutal. Your ship is kind of slow and weak. It's easy to get overpowered and outnumbered. Even in the settled systems, supposedly the safest place in the galaxy, you can still get jumped by raiders and pirates as you're exploring. And if it's three on one against the starting ship, you're probably gonna die. Like you're not gonna get out of there alive. So don't try to painfully brute force your way through every single encounter. If you're outmatched, tactical retreat. Just forget it. Exit stage right. Post haste. Steven. I, I don't know if anybody's going to get a Snagglepuss reference, but I, I had to do it. But there's nothing stopping you from just making a grab jump out. It takes a few seconds to wind up and you're free. Done. Over with. Not dealing with the combat that you can't possibly win. Like ship combat in general can be frustrating until you get the hang of it. But if it feels like you're outmatched, it's probably a good idea to, you know, consider the idea that you're probably outmatched. Not a lot you can do to get around that. Better to just run away get a stronger ship, and then come back and clean house. At number six, don't wander too far away from your ship and then get encumbered because it's going to be a really long, annoying walk back. Inventory limits can be a big problem, especially when you're out exploring. If you constantly overload on stuff, you're going to slowly, painfully walk back to the ship in order to unload it. Don't do it. It's never worth it. I've accidentally done it a few times, and it's never worth it. Being able to fast travel directly to your ship when you're on a planet is one of my favorite things about Starfield. It cuts out a ton of tedious overtime, but if you go over your weight limit, your oxygen will continuously drain when you run, and you won't be able to fast travel. If your ship is just parked right outside, a base or you're walking from a trade authority terminal to your ship who cares not that big of a deal but if you're thousands of meters away from your ship in the middle of nowhere having to slowly march all the way back to your ship because you're overburdened it's miserable do not be like me put some points into weightlifting increase your inventory size uh, or better yet just dump all the junk into your companion's inventory and take it back when you get in the ship while we're on this point be careful not to give your companions too much stuff, because if you do make the mistake of giving them something you want to hold on to, like better armor or a gun, they're a lot more likely to get lost, either because the companion can disappear or die or just you forget about it. At number five, don't leave ship parts in your inventory. Don't be a dope. I've done this too many times and I feel stupid every time. Uh, don't do this. Don't leave ship parts in your inventory. Get these things in your cargo as soon as possible because they're some of the worst inventory space hogs in the game. These things cost 10 mass a piece. So even if you only got a few of them, it dramatically increases your weight. And because they're stored away in miscellaneous, it's super easy to forget you got them. I spent half the game with a bunch of these things in my inventory. I barely had any space to pick stuff up. And because of that, I was constantly over encumbered. And it's just, it's really frustrating. You're like, what the hell is going on here? I could have avoided that too if I had just put the ship parts in the cargo hold where they belong. I wasn't exactly trained at housekeeping, however, as a child. I am a bird. It's shocking I play video games enough as it is. And let's not even get into the whole speaking English thing and the Snagglepuss references. <laughs> um, it might sound obvious, but like in Fallout and Skyrim, Starfield is filled with stuff to pick up. So it doesn't take too long to have a lot of random crap in your inventory that mostly just takes up space. It's just that among all that stuff, like there's an item that takes up way more space than anything else. And unless you're specifically looking for it, it's easy to assume that it's armor or guns and you forget that you got a, a friggin' ship part hanging around like in real life you wouldn't be like well i've got that auxiliary booster in my pocket i could probably get rid of that like you're gonna notice the auxiliary booster it's gonna be an option immediately is, is that an auxiliary booster in your pocket are you happy to see me ah! in starfield it's super easy to just forget about it so if you're really wondering why the hell your inventory is all filled up think to yourself am i carrying around any parts of a spaceship <laughs>
At number four, it feels wrong, but in Starfield, you want to get caught. Uh, it's going to go against every instinct you have from playing prior Bethesda games like Skyrim or Fallout 4, but in Starfield, you're going to want to get caught at least once. Normally in their games, getting caught stealing is a bad thing. You get locked up in jail, you eat a fine, or the victim just goes aggro on you. None of them, none of these things desirable outcomes. When it comes to stealing, the whole point is to not get caught. However, if you want to join the Crimson Fleet, the pirate faction with one of the best quest lines in the game, you have to. You gotta get captured. You gotta walk right up to that cop and pickpocket him badly and be like, oh, officer. Did I just steal this from you? No, I'm joking. It doesn't really matter what crime you commit. Just that people see you and that you get approached by a cop and get locked up. Your first instinct is going to reload your last save, but don't make that mistake. Stick with it and you'll get taken to a United Colonies ship and then press ganged into infiltrating the Crimson Fleet. You're not locked in at any point either. Once they give you your orders, you're, you're free to ignore them. You can hold off on joining the fleet as long as you want. It's worth coming back to eventually, though. All the faction quests and stuff. Starfield are super strong, uh, but uh, Crimson Fleet's probably my favorite. And number three, don't leave contraband in your inventory. Probably sounds obvious, but it's an easier mistake to make than you might expect, especially if you're just picking up stuff and not thinking about it too much. Again, easy to forget about that auxiliary booster in your pocket. Uh, but in Starfield, there's items that are considered contraband. Obviously, they can be sold for a high price. But if you're scanned with them at, at planetary checkpoints, you're going to get the contraband confiscated along with any items you've stolen. And also, you have to pay a hefty fine. I don't need to belabor this point too much, but if you don't want that, especially if you're a kleptomaniac like me, who's just constantly picking everything up as though it's the main goal of the game. Like, I'm a bird of prey, but you could easily mistake me as a scavenger playing these games. Uh, the loss of contraband, it can be annoying, but losing all the stolen loot, oof, that sucks. There's a few options for dealing with contraband, but one thing you really don't want to do is just pick it up and then forget about it because you're going to get caught eventually. So be smart. Either dump this stuff immediately because it's honestly not that much money for the kind of heat it brings you, at least, or get some shielded cargo holds to hide it from scans or sell it off the second you get it, like in the Red Mile or other settlements that don't scan your ship. There's not a lot of them, but there's enough. Oh, and don't get smart and try to dump your contraband on the floor of your ship or something. It's, it's not actually in the cargo or your inventory. Oh, that means it won't get scanned, right? Oh, it gets scanned. And number two, don't ignore this note. Uh, randomly, you might find this note on dead enemies simply entitled Secret Outpost. If you're not paying attention, you might pass the thing without really looking at it and assume it's a joke or just a little bit of lore to find, but it's it's a lot more than that. To say what it is exactly would spoil the surprise, and uh, I would say that it's worth not spoiling, actually. But don't make the mistake I did and ignore this note for most of the game. Go to Denabola 1B, like the note describes, and complete the quest there. Seriously, this will lead you towards some of the best rewards in the game. It includes an entire ship that you get for free. Most quests just give you money, maybe a new suit or a special gun but this one does all that and nets you a spaceship uh that's uh, might i add a lot better than your starter ship And finally, at number one, don't get burnt out trying to explore every single inch of the damn universe. The universe of Starfield is very, very big. It's got over a thousand planets across a hundred star systems, and that's a lot of ground to cover that might be tempting to start exploring the second you get out of the prologue. It's a mistake. There are a lot of planets, and there are interesting things to find out there, but the actual good stuff mainly found in the cities. It's time to pull this particular band-aid off. Planets in Starfield are not limitless. They're not exciting places to explore and like in you know real life although you can't jump around and explore planets the planets that you would be able to are kind of empty how planet exploration works is you select the landing site on the planet you park your ship anywhere as long as it's not on water and from there the game generates a landscape depending on a few factors one is planetary traits so what it looks like what materials it has and then the other is type of terrain which it'll tell you before landing so if you select a mountain to land uh the game generates a mountainous region 
region. If you land near the sea, you'll get a beach, uh, but it's all procedurally generated. All the little bases, caves, and whatever else you might find, they're just random generic points on a map. There's nothing special about any of them, and if you try to explore them all, you'll pretty quickly start seeing repeats. It's not continuous landscape. No matter how close you land to a previous landing spot, you're never going to actually connect the two things. The planets are not actually big maps that you're selecting a point on. They're just collections of separate, randomly generated little maps for the most part, at least when you're talking about landing spots. There are planets where things are custom built, like the areas around any cities or colonies are definitely worth checking out. But if you're picking a random spot on the map, you're going to look at a lot of boring expanse and possibly repeated buildings. Planets can be fun to build bases on, but for exploration, they're pretty boring. And if that's all you're doing in the game, it's not going to be a lot of fun. For me, personally, the much better content is found elsewhere, like the faction quests, the side quests, the shipbuilding, the base building. The game really shows its promises there. It's easy to get caught up in the massive scale of the universe, but it all starts to feel kind of small after a while. Don't make my mistake and waste hours of your time trying to find new stuff on these empty planets. There's so much more that you can be doing. There's so much in this game. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, the subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.